Okay, so the last controller that we're going to make is our neck. So let's do that. Let's go to create nerves circle. And then let's drag this guy up. And I want to get him now here. I click on the snap to point. There we go. And we could probably rotate this guy. Or like that maybe. That should work. And let's do a modify freeze transformations. Let's call this our... Let's call it head. Controller. And we want to uh, select that and click on the head joint go to constraint orient options box uh, let's make sure this is constraint all axis apply and now as we can see we can rotate this guy I'm not gonna give it a point constraint because the neck should only rotate I shouldn't be able to just drag it out and we also want to get the uh, the head joint inside our chest controller so that it moves if you want to so let's do that get this guy and drag it inside our chest cool nice so now that has we have that working so actually there's one more controller this is the last one let's go to create nerves circle let's go this one up and let's, let's change the shape just a little bit. And this is our master controller. So basically this guy controls the entire thing. So let's go modify freeze transformations. So basically the master controller should have all your controllers inside of it. So let's drag the... Uh, Let's see what controllers do we have here. Let's drag the leg controllers inside there. Let's drag the, uh, the, the hip controller. And let's see, do we need the spine? I don't think we need the spine curve in there. So basically our master... Oops, let's select that. Basically our master controls the, the entire thing. So there we have it guys, um, that's pretty much all we need to do as far as controllers and uh, yeah, so you know we're keeping it simple, we got FK controls for the arms and the legs as well, so if we move this guy down we can see that because of FK these guys just move by themselves and we can rotate this guy like this rotate our chest well, this is kind of weird when we do it that way because it kind of moves his head kind of strangely but anyway you get the idea to move our arm here or well, maybe he's reaching out like this or something crazy but anyway yeah and you know the nice thing when you do something like that you can always come here to all your uh, controllers select them all then you set all these guys to zero and your guy will go back to its original pose because that's the nice thing about using controllers is that you can animate them um, fairly easily and you know you're, you don't have to worry about the joints themselves so yeah that's basically how we create a pretty simple rig and again if you wanted to you know go further and create uh, controllers for the fingers you can do the exact same thing, we can, you can create joints, I mean controllers for these guys and what you would do is to create a point constraint actually no, you would just do a orient constraint on these guys so that you can rotate the fingers but I'm gonna leave that off, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out just create controllers, orient constrain them to these guys and you should be good to go for more control so yeah, so basically the only thing we have left to do is uh, we probably just need to clean up the uh, the skinning just a little bit. For example, I think when I move this guy, his hat kind of moves strangely. I mean, Maya did a pretty good job with the skinning. 
I'm actually pretty uh, surprised that it's uh, pretty good. It's actually it's not bad, the skinning. But I'll just show you real quick if you want to, you know, make it better. I guess if you Maya for your character, maybe Maya didn't do such a good job with the skinning. Let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so before we, uh, before I show you how to do the uh, painting uh, uh, skinning. Uh, if you want to get fancy with the color of your controllers, there is a way to do that. Uh, if you go to uh, Attribute Editor, Object Display, and you go to Enable Overwrite, you can change the color of the, uh, the controller. So basically, like I just did right there. Let me show you how to do it on the leg, on the foot joint. Enable override. Say I wanted this guy to be that bright green. So there we go. Enable override. So this is just to make it easier for you to like see your joints. By the way, we can. If you, want, if you don't want to see the uh, joints anymore, just go to show and disable joints. There we go. So yeah, that's just a quick, you know, it's just to get fancy with the colors and everything. But anyway, so let's show you, let me show you about skinning. So as I said before, uh, Maya actually did a pretty darn good job with the skinning itself um, like I don't think there's there's much to do with this guy honestly um, but if you if in your case it's like completely different you guys all messed up uh, just make sure you set your model so that we can actually select it here and go to skin paint skin weights and then just click on the options box and that's going to open this window so basically what this window is showing you is showing you all your joints and when you click on each of these guys it shows you how much that joint is uh, affecting the actual geometry of your model so the hip for example it's affecting all that area the top of the leg is affecting that the knee is affecting that foot and the toe and you can go through all these guys and see how much each joint is affecting uh, of the geo. So the head for example. So this is a good example one that needs fixing. So as you can see if it's completely white that means that that joint is like completely affecting that part of the geo. Um, and if it's just slightly gray, it's just like an in-between kind of thing. So for the head, for example, I want the head to be, you know, completely um, taking care of that, right? I don't need the, the head tip joint. I just need this one to control the entire head. So to do that, what we want to do is we want to click on Add for Paint Operation. Make sure you do that one. Um, and you could so if you click on flood it's gonna flood the entire thing so that means that whoops and this is one of the things that happens when you undo uh, so this is an example of you know if you undo it's going to pretty much mess up your uh, joints so in my case here you know it kind of messed the whole thing up so I'll probably have to reskin this guy so let's do that. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Let's click on all my joints and this guy and go to skin. Let's see, it's on bind skin. There we go. Now I'm going to have to redo it because that thing messed it up. Okay, so now I did the reskinning. Let me open that again. Skin wait. So we're back. Square ball, square one. So don't use the flood, I guess that's the uh, lesson of what just happened. And also, don't use Ctrl Z to undo, because Maya usually just messes up. And it, what you just saw could happen to you as well if you undo. 
I guess that's one of the strange things about Maya when you're skinning. Um, usually things go bad when you undo, so try not to undo. Um, so I'm going to click on add and to increase the uh, size of the uh, painting thing here, hold down the B key, then just drag. So with add, I can just start to paint this guy in and then since it's all white, that means it's affecting the whole thing here. So now that means that joint, the, uh, let's see. I think that was the head. Okay, yeah, that's the head joint. So now that joint is fully controlling now this part right here. And if I wanted to be really precise on how much it's affecting it, I'm gonna press Q here to exit. Let's go to face mode, double click these guys, and go to uh, vertex mode. So double click these guys and then hold down control. Uh, right mouse click and go to vertex vert vertices and let's go back and open the uh, paint skin weights options box and now if I do the flood it's only going to plot on the uh, vertices that I have selected so see this so there we go so if we flood on that it works pretty good unlike the last time that we tried to use it and now if we want to affect the whole thing again I can go back to selecting the whole mesh and then just continuing to paint my skin weights and looking for the head there we go and if I want more con if I want the uh, that to affect it more you now I can keep going or if I want to be more precise I can select uh, you know that go to vertex skin weights paint weights and then this guy I'm going to click on flood so that it you know controls the entire thing so let's see how that's going so you know now it controls the entire thing and obviously I want to fix it so that it, it also brings the entire head and the uh, the mustache there so let's do that do the mustache and probably the eyeballs vertex skin weights paint skin weights oops let's open the options box then flood exit now go to head I'm going to isolate this guy probably deselect then go to vertex skin weights and flood that guy exit press Q to exit so now this guy should have full control of the head there shouldn't be strange uh, stretching with the uh, mustache and he should be working fine obviously some areas need more uh, fixing like here for example so I could have it there and then the whole thing selected I could go to skin weights and probably let's see probably paint less opacity I guess to kind of fix that there maybe the neck can add a little bit more to the neck so it's a back and forth thing so we'll go from the from the neck to the head, to the neck, to the head, until I get some results here that I think look good when uh, we're moving it. So yeah guys, basically that's it. That's all you have to kind of do. Uh, let's move the guy in separate, in a different position and kind of fix the uh, skin weighting. But yeah, that's I think that's pretty much all that you need to know. Um, I'm sure if you want to fix this more, you can totally do that. 
Okay, so we want to have more control over the uh, knee and the elbows. So to do that, let's go ahead and create a NURBS circle. Let me hide the geo and snap this to the uh, knee. Let's move that guy forward like this. Going to rotate it by 90 and let's do a uh, freeze transformations this is going to be our left knee so with that knee uh, selected select that control and then hold down uh, control and select the uh, IK left leg so with that selected, go to Constrain and click on Pulp Vector. Cool. So what that does is it allows you to kind of rotate the knee. And we also want to parent the uh, that to the uh, to the foot control. So let's do that. Let's drag this into our foot. So now if we move this guy, it moves with it and like this and this gives us control over how to rotate it so yeah i hope you like the tutorial and again if you have questions make sure you leave them in the comments below um, this pretty much concludes the entire gunslinger luigi series here this is the last video for the series uh, it took a while to get to here but i think it will be worthwhile to follow this tutorial and if you are looking to animate it you know there's, pl there's plenty of tutorials out there that can help you uh, on that end on how to animate it but yeah thank you for watching if you liked the video make sure you click the like button and subscribe Thank you.